uh, Anthony hinted about. And I think it makes a, a good transition from uh, uh, Jake's slides, the fact that uh, you know, the, the success of these uh, tour bridges and the tour network in general has really uh, sort of changed the game in terms of censorship. Um, a lot of these entities, whether they're governments or other organizations trying to impose the censorship software, sort of have this fine balance they need to strike. Um, obviously, if China really wanted to crack down on their network, they could go with a whitelisting approach where they're only going to allow certain websites, but that would make for a lot of angry citizens and also a lot of you know outrage. Um, so when they kind of play this this whack-a-mole game where they're they're going after um, you know tour bridges or trying to harvest these these addresses of the um, the bridges to block this, it turns out to be this this sort of leaky sieve where um, these bridge IPs can be passed around privately and, and distributed in sort of a peer-to-peer -peer social fashion. Um, so you know, I, th I think that uh, when when these entities or these governments are, are looking at this this problem, they think, hey, you know, why don't we push the same functionality that we have down to the end host where we'll have more control. We'll actually be able to inspect upon the uh, the processes that the guest is running, uh, have more flexibility, and have more protection against uh, a user potentially trying to evade or remove the the censorship functionality. Functionality, excuse me. So, uh, whoa, sorry about the formatting there. Uh, I think. Uh, some open office uh, nuances. Uh, Green Dam is uh, the host-based censorship software that was introduced by the, the Chinese government. Um, this was, uh, I think, early last year is when they first announced it. And originally they were saying, hey, all PCs that are sold in China are going to come with this Green Dam software. And there was, you know, a, a bit of a, a hoopla around that uh, the announcement, and you know, they kind of slowly backed down as as more and more information came out about this Green Dam software and you know how. Uh, port was built and some of the components that were stolen to build it, um, the Chinese government kind of backed down. And I, I think now it's, it's, it's still deployed in um, um, like internet cafes where uh, users might not have full control over their computer. And I think they might be rolling it out to um, like schools and stuff too or other government organizations. Actually they are out of funding but they have target to move, to move this product to sell in Taiwan. Yeah, there was a there was an announcement recently that uh, they they lost their government funding. The company that was developing the Green Dam software, uh, which is not surprising because they did a, a pretty poor job. Um, so uh, again, no no titles. I apologize for the formatting here, but uh, these are the features of the Green Dam software. What Anthony uh, briefly went over. They have a, a content filter, which you know looks at the um, actual content you're creating in these applications. Like if you're writing a Word document or writing in a text file, as Anthony showed the screenshot for, it will actually pop up that nice uh, nice little warning. Which I don't know. What does that translate to, Anthony? The Chinese message. Yeah. Oh, um, this message is inappropriate. Uh, it will be filtered. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also uh, there's also these uh, network filtering capabilities that are you know deployed on the end host, but you know filter the network connections uh, coming out of it. And they actually did steal some software or some blacklists from the uh, cyber city company. Just like straight up pulled down their blacklists and included them in the software, um, which was was pretty blatant. And uh, I think there were some 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 lawsuits over over that. Um, also, the image pornography filtering using the OpenCV package, which looks for these skin tones in the picture. So, you know, that baby picture that Anthony showed has a lot of skin tone colors. So that's why it was uh, uh, considered inappropriate. Um, but the bonus features are the are the interesting ones, where uh, you know there were some very very poor programming practices once you start digging into the uh, Green Dam software. You know, trivial stuff like uh, some of my colleagues at the University of Michigan, like the first thing they tried, they uh, they you know had a long URL that you click on. That URL is actually inspected by Green Dam, and it's just a straight smack uh, a stack smash um, just with a long URL. This is like, you know, 1990s uh, programming mistakes. Um, so uh, th those features uh, are, are not necessarily uh, what we're going to focus on today. But we're going to look at, you know, how Green Dam actually operates and how it actually hooks into your host um, and sort of the, the techniques we use to actually unhook those hooks. Um, so there's a, a wide range of interposition mechanisms that Green Dam employs. Um, the one that you guys might be most familiar with, if you're familiar with uh, any sort of root kits or uh, sort of uh, ring three rootkits. Um, they can hook these. There's a, a API called set windows hook, which allows you to uh, be notified of certain activity, like uh, window messages or, or keyboard activity. Um, so you can some some you know poor keyloggers will use set windows hook in order to uh, get your keystrokes. Uh, it also uses the Winsock LSP, which is um, mostly a headache for normal users. Uh, the layered service provider functionality by Winsock. When people install LSPs and then try to remove them, it usually ends up borking the entire Winsock stack. Um, these guys hooked uh, you know, a number of your traditional WinSock socket calls to inspect on the traffic that's going in and out of your system. Um, and that's in one of the DLLs that's injected into all the processes on your machine. 
Um, and lastly, there was uh, you know, a, a number of uh, API hooks they use, um, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, the techniques that are, are used to uh, uh, inject the DLLs and also uh, hook the API calls. And there's a list of these, uh, I think, processes. I think Anthony showed a, a screenshot of you know, particular processes by name that are targeted. Um, so a lot of this stuff, if you change your process name, you won't be targeted. But uh, you, know, you might not be able to do that without administrator privileges. So traditionally, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with uh, rootkits or uh, API hooking, uh, there's sort of two ways to go about it. You can go about it the good way and actually write a kernel driver, which will actually protect um, the integrity of your hooks in the user space applications. Or you can go the lazy route, which is what these guys did with the uh, ring three uh, rootkits or ring three hooking, um, which is when you actually implement these API hooking functionality in user space in memory of the, the process. So you're sort of on this, this uh, even ground. So traditionally how this happens is you can either patch the import address table um, when you're actually injecting yourself into um, different processes on the system or you can actually do sort of the trampolines where you will overwrite um, the first few bytes of each function in order to jump to your hooking code and then re rewrite the uh, instruction that used to be there and jump back. And this is what's used in, you know, fairly poor, poorly written uh, rootkits in spyware. Um, so what you would do is you inject into all the running processes on the system using this create remote thread functionality in the Windows platform, which is uh, awesome functionality uh, for rootkits and malware authors, um, but it can also be used, uh, I guess, for good purposes. We're going to use it. Um, but essentially it allows you to actually, you know, like, it, like it says, create a remote thread in a process, allocate memory in that process, put your, uh, put your executable code into that process, and then execute it within the context of that remote process. Um, so by doing this, you can inject into all the running processes, hook the create process call inside each of those processes such that when they launch further processes, you're able to sort of spread virally into those new processes as well. Um, so how Green Dam works is it injects itself into these, this list of processes, whether it's Firefox or Notepad, and then we can actually go in and just uninject all of the, uh, all of the Green Dam code that's been put in there. So that's what I did. I wrote a tool called uh, Damburst which I, I think is interesting uh, from the standpoint that uh, us security researchers don't usually get to use our, our skills for uh, good purposes, so to speak. Um, the same techniques that, that Danvers uh, uses are, are good for, you know, writing rootkits. But, you know, when we can actually use this, this uh, functionality and, and our skills to help users um, who are facing the censorship, it's kind of a win-win because you get to do something that's technically interesting but it also has a, a, a good side effect on, on society. So while there were these interesting vulnerabilities in the Green Lamp software which would allow us to own all of China, um, it's, it's always good to try to help the users as opposed to uh, infecting them. Um, so a few properties about Danburst which, you know, we tried to make uh, more friendly for users who might be in restricted environments. Um, it doesn't require administrator privileges. Obviously, if you have administrator privileges, you can remove or uninstall the, the Green Dev software. But in many of these cases where you're in an internet cafe or, or other public computers, you might not have the, you don't, you don't own the box, so you might not have admin rights and you might not be able to remove the software. And we also made this uh, a very uh, transient functionality such that it doesn't leave behind a lot of evidence um, that you are running it. So if you are in an internet cafe, and you bursted a few of the, the processes on that box in order to evade the censorship, um, and someone else came to that box later to look at it, they wouldn't know that you had done this and you can kind of get away uh, scot-free. And, and lastly, of course, it, it actually, by uninjecting the uh, Danvers routines that are vulnerable, it actually increases the security of your computer because you're sort of cutting off these vulnerable code paths uh, from being executed. So the injection process works like so. Um, as I mentioned, these are all uh, standard parts of Win32 which allow you to allocate uh, memory in the remote processes and actually write your code into that process and then uh, start a thread um, based out of that uh, DLL that you just loaded. Um, and similarly, um, for the patching of the uh, WinSock LSPs, um, once we're actually running code in inside the process of the, uh, the, same, the same process that's been uh, infected with uh, GreenDAM, we can simply uh, overwrite the LSP since removing them are pain in the ass. We can simply uh, overwrite them with no ops and uh, just make sure that uh, uh, its functionality is effectively neutered. So we, we pop into each process, we patch out the uh, uh, functionality of, of, of Green Dam, and then we unload it lastly to make sure that the vulnerable routines are no longer in there. And I wanted to show you guys a demo, um, but I don't have the VM on, on this laptop. Um, but this is what it would look like. You know, you're searching for porn or whatever you really want to find down there. Um, immediately when you hit enter, nothing happens. The, the connection is interrupted and Green Dam has filtered that because it recognizes it as an offensive word. Um, and you can see that in the little uh, screenshot near the bottom there, you see the handler, inject lib, db filter, surf guard, those are all DLLs that uh, 
um, Green Dam has injected. And in the Green Dam uh, snapshot, you can see the applications that are specifically targeted by Green Dam in red. So you see you know, Firefox and Notepad there have a full, have all of the DLLs injected into their process address space. Um, and some of the other ones are just partially injected. They don't have all the same filtering routines injected into those processes. Um, but you can select any process that you want to burst it or you can just click burst all. Our code will go in there and uh, burst all those processes such that this is disabled and you can search for your porn uh, successfully or your politically motivated uh, material, whatever you're looking for that a Green Dam does not approve of. So, you know, getting back to the uh, uh, sort of the theme of this, um, Green Dam was a initial attempt at this, this host based sensor where and as I mentioned the news report that was recently released uh, took all the government funding from this company that was developing Green Dam and you know from this first attempt we can see that they did a pretty poor job. Um, they didn't hire the right company, they didn't uh, you know cross their T's and dot their I's uh, before releasing this and they weren't, I don't think they were really aware of the, the, the backlash they would get and the quality of the code that they were releasing. Um, so it is kind of scary to think that you know in the future they're definitely going to do a much better job. I mean they're not going to make the same mistakes um, and I think that the success of the, the tools that uh, uh, Tor is providing and that, that Jacob is providing um, will only drive more entities and government organizations to approach this censorship problem from the host based level. Um, so I, I think we'll undoubtedly see uh, more of this host based censorship software and I did see just a few weeks ago an article about uh, a new green dam or a host based censorship software in Vietnam and I haven't looked into that at all but um, it's not surprising. I think we'll see a lot more of this in the future. And with that, Anthony you want to conclude? Yep. Um, thank you. John actually presented and I would like to just and so Jake also presented like a, like a short brief of a conclusion. Actually I suppose the internet censorship happens here everywhere. Okay. So however we need to have a balance between them, the monitoring and privacy and free for information. And we are now target, I'm not target to take a 18 hour flights to here to bring my country. However the problem is we have the issues, we have the some areas to improve the technologies. Okay. So how to uh, get more, I mean, uh, uh, for, uh, more for, uh, step forward from the research. And special friends to Jacob, John, and, a bit, and also to give this censorship, I mean, this talk with us then, and also I'm thankful to my um, teammates, um, Sam, Jackie, and Charles, and my professor, and Rocky, and he gives me a lot of insights in the censorship and the network uh, monitoring. And my and Chinese bloggers, like I said, and Digital Boy, then the Chou Li Ma is Purchase from uh, Digital Boy in one hundred dollars in ten Chulima, <laughs> and also my wife and my dog's family. This is my head of army, <laughs> and it's uh, my elder sister, and uh, Gigi is the head of uh, has the wife. Then thank you.